Hi and welcome to my studio. Um, this is Katie Sue at the Heather Robertson Art Studios. Well, studios, my living room. <laughs> um, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I can't wait to show you some of the gorgeous samples um, some of our design team have made uh, for the Undersea event and, um, and show you some of the trip tip tips and tricks and some of the little extra things you can do with the molds um some of them will be in some of our um some of the gorgeous samples and some of them i'll show you here so um, i'm going to switch over to um, my overhead camera and we can get started with um showing you these fun new molds with everything shown on here um Anything that Katie Sue sell is available at katiesuedesigns.com. So make sure you, you pop over there. Um, I think Ian in the office is helping out with um, any links in the comments. So um, let's get started. Right, so I showed you this one briefly. This sample, this gorgeous card, has been made using our dolphins, fun fish, our seashells, as well as our turtle mold, which has been made, uh, which has been used to make these gorgeous little jellyfish. And the frames as well, the frames that have been used have been our rustic wood effect six by six box frames, all available on the Katie Sue Designs website. So let's move these out the way for a moment and bring these lovely little cards in oh by the way have you seen this is made out of soap i think this is absolutely stunning making use of um our octopus seahorse little crabs and the seaweed from the fun fish and our gorgeous mermaid all of this is soap I th and it smells gorgeous so um let me move that out of the way and i'll get the molds in um, I do apologise, they're doing some building work in the house behind me and they've decided to get all the heavy machinery out today. I hope it's not too loud, I don't think it's interfering with the mic. Um, but Ian, if there is an issue, please let me know and um, I'll close the, close the back door. Alright, so I think we're going to start with this gorgeous fun fish mould. It's this one here, it's a lovely, it's not too deep. But it's got a lovely handhold all the way around so you can flex and twist and pull this as you like and it's got all that delicious lovely detail in there so let's move these out the way and i'll show you how to get the best out of this mold i'm limited with space here so i'm going to be moving things around as i go right so let's get a couple of these out you can colour these in any way you like. Now for these, I've mainly used watercolour paint. So whatever, whatever product you use on paper, you can typically use on the hearty soft air dry clay. Right. I always like to get a nice range of colours going here. And as you can see, some of these have been painted on white and some of them have been painted on coloured clay. And let's get some of the seaweed. So you could have the seaweed as seaweed or coral. You can make it however you like. And in fact, on one of these, one of the lovely samples I've got over here, Look at that. The seaweed has been turned into hands for for that skeleton. I think this is from one, one of our recent uh, recent molds that we we have. Um, this one will be available um, on the Katie Sue Designs website. It's got a dragon uh, wrapped around its head, but perfect for an undersea undersea Halloween um, pirate treasure theme. And these little bol uh, these little pearls here have been made with our measuring mold. Oh, yeah, and the rock there is the mermaid's hair. I mean, there's so many ideas you can do with this. But let's get some clay into this mould. I'm using the Hearty Soft Air Dry Clay. And I've pre-mixed some with 
some of the coloured clay. So let's do let's do an orange fish here. Once I've mixed my clay, I store I store my clay in little Ziploc bags, wrap it up, and keep all that moisture out, and then I put that into another plastic box. Let's shift those out of the way. With all of the moulds, just give them a dust with some corn flour. That gets all that excess, all that excess moisture out of your mould. You just want to make sure it's nicely conditioned. My clay is not too sticky, it's not sticking to my hand, so it's not going to stick in the mould. And let's start with this little angel fish style fish. Really push the clay in there, get that around all the edges, really get it in. If you've not got enough, just pop some more in there. There we go. And pull that away from the edges. You could use a cosmetic sponge as well to get it right into those corners. And you can also either flatten it with the back of a card or just turn it over like that. Give it a wiggle. That gets the air underneath and out pops your gorgeous little fish. Pop that onto some paper towel to dry. I'm going to pop that to one side. Now the paper towel will absorb the moisture from the bottom while the air dries it from the top. So, um, and a little uh, tip that a friend, uh, friend showed me the other day was if you place the paper towel onto some um, onto a baking rack, um, you know, a, a cookie cooling rack or a cake stand, um, the air can circulate underneath as well. So it can, as the paper towel is pulling the moisture out of the clay, the air will be drying the paper towel as well. So um, I tried I tried that last night, and some of my really thick pieces dried really really quickly. Um, I was really impressed. So by this morning, my mermaids were lovely and dry. I'm using a cosmetic sponge to press that clay into the seaweed area. And you can use the back of a paintbrush to do this as well. Just get that clay pushed into all the little strands of the seaweed. Put it away from the edges and put that clay away so it doesn't dry. Give that a flex and there you have a lovely piece of seaweed to go with your fish. I'm going to pop that over to one side as well to dry. And as we're here let's Let's do this other fish as well, so you can see how quickly and easily it goes out the mold, in and out of the mould. Pop some clay in there. This is a little bit of the blue um, mixed with the white, and I've added the tiniest, tiniest amount of black just to mute the color and deepen the color slightly so if you're wanting us if you're wanting to mute your colors you don't want them too bright just the tiniest hint of black um, just dulls the color down just that little bit there you go and there you have your gorgeous well it could be a clownfish or it could be any type of little fish <laughs> the other thing i like about these is if you wanted this to be seaweed as well or just different type of shell you could cut the tail off and you've got some then you've got some corner embellishments for um oopsie, for your frames etc so for instance i think it was on this card here here we go this is a gorgeous gorgeous card again made with those box frames um oh i apologize my dogs are I'm going to mute the microphone for just one moment. Please bear with me.
apologies i had to close the back door and get the dogs in uh sorry about that they've got the um concrete smashes or whatever it is out there um yes going back to they've used uh she's used the fins here i think that was from some of the fish to create this lovely lovely little corner corner piece there, there mixed with some pearls and some seashells and the sea swirls i think that's been beautifully done again painting you don't have to be you don't have to put a lot of detail into your painting just a lovely shimmer paint on top of there and all that detail gets uh comes through so i'm going to pop that to one side and let's show you some painting techniques for these fish now for these i'm just going to use my watercolors nothing fancy um, I've just put all my water, I've got some tube watercolours and I've stuck those into a little tin. Let's move you out of the way. I'm really good at making a mess here. So I'm going to start with that yellow one and a, and a white one, just so you can see the difference. And let's get a nice paintbrush and some water. And I want to create this nice shaded effect here. So I'm going to go in with a bit of a darker yellow or, or maybe um, actually I'm, I'm going to do it similar to this one here. I'm going to go in with a nice bright orange. So wet your paint. Let me get some, let's pop this on some paper towel so we don't make too much mess here. And I just layer the paint straight onto onto my piece nothing i'm not doing anything fancy here just laying the paint on and then i think i'm going to go in with a bit of yellow i think let's just see if i've got some yellow here yellow might not do too much but you mix that yellow with that little bit of brown there just to darken it added some yellow on top there and I've blended the two colours together just to get a lovely ombre ombre effect. Just move some of that off the eye. So I'm just using a little bit of water there just to wipe some of that paint away. So let's push that to one side and actually I'm going to use where's that white fish go? There we go. I think I'm going to do this in a nice bright pink. Let's just see what this will look like. Let's get some pink, a bit more water. And you can see the difference that it makes having it with a colour underneath and having it with, um, with white underneath. Let's put some blue on the top here. So when we add these together, it will create the blue and the pink create a nice purple in the middle. Let's pop you to one side to dry. And likewise, I'm going to do the same with this little fish here. I'm just going to add little bit of blue on the bottom and you can see how it blends into all the raised areas all the dents in there just to create a little bit of shadow not much you don't need a, a lot of shadow detail there but having water on your brush the water does the work for you And I think let's just add this tiniest little bit of orange over here just to enhance that fin. There we go. So I'm going to leave those to dry. I'm going to move those to one side, leave them to dry. And then we'll come back and I'll show you how to further enhance those fish, bring the eyes to life. Um, actually, I'll, I'll start with one of the eyes now because I think we've got some time for that. I want to make sure that I get enough time to show you 
as much painting as I can as well as showing you these molds. So I don't need to paint the white here, but I'm going to paint a little bit of white on that eye. This is this is with acrylic paint. And the fine brush just paints a little bit of white in that eye. And we'll paint a little bit of white on that eye. And then leave that to dry while I show you the next fun mold. Right. Put those paintbrushes away. Let's shift you over. Let's move these out the way. I promise you my studio is going to be there's going to be stuff all over the place when I'm done here with you. <laughs> Right, the oh the next really really cute mold is this one. And this is such a fun mold to paint as well, especially the tortoise, because it's not tortoise, the turtle. Um the paint, uh, especially when you're using watercolours, blends into um into all those crevices so so beautifully. Right, let's get some crabs out here. So that's a that's an unpainted crab, and two painted crabs. One has been one has been sculpted, uh, molded with white clay, and the other one with orange. And there's a little handy tip with these, which I'll show you now. Um, where's it gone? I put them somewhere safe. There we go. Got some little bits of wire here. Um, this is wire that just comes on a small. Um, just florist wire, nothing fancy. Um, you could use use florist wire like this, which we sell in in multi packs, and you can also use florist wire like this. And I'll show you how I use that in just a moment. Um, so for for all the products, just a reminder, you can get them all at katiesudesigns.com on the website. Um, and thank you, Ian, for um, all the handy handy links um, in the comments. Um, I can't see the comments myself, um, but if there are any questions, um, I'll certainly have a look through them a bit later and, and answer any questions that, that you may have. Right, condition the mold. I'm going to do this with green clay. just so that you can see how it comes out the mold. So let's push that in. I've, I've actually got several timers set today because I overran the last time um, that we did this. I've got about three timers going here. I've got a big clock in front of me. I've got the timer on my phone and the timer on my watch. And you know what it's like when you're crafting. Um, <laughs> there's no such thing as a well the crafting minute is more like a crafting well it's it's there's no such thing as a crafting minute a crafting minute in my house can be three hours I can lose myself completely in in the crafts that I'm doing and I'm sure most of you are the same but it's so lovely to escape into into our fun crafts All right, let's pop that out and there, look at the beautiful detail there and how all of that comes out um, with, and, and so quickly with very, very little effort. I'm going to move you to one side and also show you this one. Now this, you can spend a little bit of extra time and mold this in multicolors. So it can it can easily be done, but you just have to take your time with it. So I'm going to attempt one now, bearing in mind I can't put my head over the mould because I've got a camera there. So I'm just carefully going in with my clay, pushing that into the mould and getting that right into all those little crevices. I want to make sure all that colour is 
where that colour goes, I want to make sure that's covered. Um, there's also that little, actually that's the white carapace underneath. So let's get some white clay for that. You don't need much. Just roll a little thin sausage and press that carefully into the area you want it. Let's just see, okay that needs to come up there as well because it raises up there. So I'm not going to mess around, I'm just going to put a wad of clay there. Now you can cheat. If you've already moulded one out of green, you can just cut those pieces off and press them straight back in and you know that that is the right amount of clay and it's going to be and it's going to fit right back into that area. Likewise with the head. Cut the head off. Sorry little turtle. Cut that off and let's that should be green there. So I'm going to pull that back, pop the head back in the mould and again let's do this with his feet or his back, back flippers, pop those in and then you can just fill, fill the back in with some white or green or scrap clay whatever you have, turn that over and let's see, fingers crossed this has worked There you go, almost. So we might have to do a tiny little paint touch-up job just in that area there. But there you have three different colours clay of clay in the same mould, and there won't there'll be minimal painting with this. So I'll pop him out the way to dry as well. There, there's a dried piece. And let's put this clay away. And oh yeah, I'm gonna show you the crab. There's a really, really handy trick that I found. Um, now if you're doing this with resin, if you're doing, if you're making this with resin, um, bear, bear in mind there are lots of thin areas here, so you do need to be careful when you're moulding and handling your your pieces. And when you're painting with paint that is wet, like watercolours, you have to remember this is air dry clay. It will absorb water back into um, into it when you add water so the clay will soften as you're painting it until it dries again so it won't become clay again it won't, won't get soft soft but where there are thin areas it will be slightly weaker when you're painting and when and when you're handling it so if something is not stuck down completely the very thin areas will be weak spots now that's not a bad thing it's just it's just the nature of of clay like like you'd, you'd be careful with any thin area on on any product resin will be more durable um, but with air dry clay i discovered a really handy little trick that just helps me um it helps keep my pieces a bit stronger so i've taken some really really tiny pieces of wire you don't have to do this, this is just something I like to do. And press that into the backs of the eyes, kind of that stalk area, the eye stalks. Just place that there. As I said, you do not need to do this. I just, it can be fiddly. <laughs> um, I, I just like doing this because it, if my if I know my piece is going to be handled a lot, I want to ensure that those areas are just that little bit more durable. Give the mould a slight flex just to kind of get the air underneath there and lift lift out your crab. And there you have your sweet, happy looking crab waving his waving his claws about. There you go. And then coming back into painting with these, let's move that out of the way so that it can dry. 
let's get a, another piece of paper towel for this. Let's see, where are we? Paint, where have you? So there, there are two, two fun ways of doing this. I like doing it with watercolour. I, I always tend to use watercolour and then add um, a little bit of acrylic paint for the, for the eyes. Um, so I'm going to go in with a nice, nice deep red. And you can get two different looks by doing this. Nice deep red. Just paint over the entire thing. Let's get a stronger red there. Again, this is all watercolour. I'm just really scrubbing the paint in there. Not too worried about being neat and tidy. The fiddly bits you can do later. But this gives a nice, nice sheen. Um, to your piece. I'm going to go and get some orange. Goodness me, half an hour's gone already. I could speed up a bit. I've only shown you two moulds. Let's see. Again, just paint that over. Now I'm a bit more careful on here because this is white and you, I like the fact that if you make it with white clay, there's the, because it's um, watercolour is translucent, you get that nice glow that comes through and then that brings your piece to life a bit more. And then keep it really simple, take some black acrylic paint and let's use a cocktail stick here. I've got a cocktail stick, it's flat one end, pointed on the other. You could also use a dotting tool for this. And I'm just going to scribble in a black pupil. Being very, let me hold that with my hand. There we go. Just like that. Wipe off any excess paint. And get some white paint. See, I normally wait for the black to dry. I'm not going to this time. Let's see if it works. Yeah, I should probably wait for this to dry. There we go. There. And a little bit more orange paint just to touch up those areas I missed. And there you have a sweet little crab. And then the same thing applies with the, the turtle. So I'm going to get my turtle here. Get some, let's see, I'm going to get a nice bright green and light green paint. Let's see, that's a nice one. And just let the paint do the work. So really wet your watercolours. Now you have to make sure your pieces are dry when you're doing this because you don't want to distort all that gorgeous detail in the mould. And just let the watercolour flow. Let the water do the work. Let it flow into all those areas. This is why I like using the, the white because it does help help it to just glow. I'm going to get some orange paint here. Be careful not to let it blend too much with your green. And just let it let it flow. By um, putting a piece of paper towel underneath that will absorb um, the, the excess water flowing off it will help your piece dry a bit quicker as well. Um, actually I'm going to add a tiny bit of red here to the bottom or darker orange and then just let that sit and dry um, and we'll come back to to finish those off in a minute. 
So let me put that one out the way. And then I'll we'll, we'll um I'll show you some finishing techniques to to finish painting these in, in just a moment. Uh where did I find you? There we go. Right. Let me show you this mould. So many moulds to show you. In fact, I'll show you two at the same time here. We're going to show you the seahorse and um and octopus and the the dolphins. These are such beautiful such 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 beautiful molds um show you the dolphin first really really easy to, to mold condition your mold and then i like to go in with um you can go in with 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 a medium blue not too bright because we can then just add a little bit of white acrylic paint to this and a little bit of a shimmer so let's see we're going to get all that clay in there so start at one end rock it backwards and forwards just like that rock backwards and forwards push the clay to the end you can add a little bit more for the tail got paint on my hands here there we go Give that a flex, give it a wiggle. So you're getting all that air underneath and that's just helping to, to lift the clay out of the mold. If your clay is sticking, it's usually because your clay is still a little bit on the wet side. So then just leave it out to dry um, just for a little bit, just for that moisture to, to evaporate. So I mentioned in my, um, my re reminder for today that I'd show you how to manipulate this while your clay is still uh, still wet but not 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 too wet you need it to be dry enough that it's still going to hold um hold the detail you can gently like pretend this is a caterpillar you don't want to squish it but you're just wanting to you're just gently manipulating it so gently gently just pull and reshape your dolphin and now there we go gently gently smooth that down with a bit of water because the clay is a bit dry here you don't you don't always have to do this bit um i've just overstretched it there there we go and there you have a dolphin jumping out of the water now i've done this uh let me just see if i've got the card here yep yeah, i've got the card here so the this is two of the box frames joined together in the middle with some of the off cuts and there you have your jumping dolphin with a painted turtle crab seahorse and flower and some shells um but so you've got a dolphin that's swimming there and then you've got a dolphin that's jumping there and a little bit more playful so you can you can change the shape of the molds which i think is it's one of the reasons i love using um the hearty soft clay because you can you can manipulate it so i'm going to place him to one side to dry out and show you a few examples of how i've painted these so there you've got two examples here of um, a light one which um they've both been made with um color color uh, colored clay this one is the same color as that all i've done with that is added some white acrylic paint on the bottom just to bring out that shape now i still need to go over the eye detail on that one um let's just get my fine paintbrush take a tiny amount of black paint just the tiniest amount and once you've painted that eye white just go in and paint, paint a black dot there and there you have your fun fun little smiling dolphin i think we might just add a little bit of pink 
don't know where my pink is but I've got this rose color that's fine so we'll use that and just paint his tongue or her tongue let's turn that round so you do need a fine paintbrush for this but you could also do this with um, add the tongue with watercolor as well and there you have a cute smiling smiling dolphin um, and what's really cool is if you get some of I've got some uh, shimmering iridescent paint I'm just going to take a very tiny amount of this let me get my flat brush I'm just going to take a tiny amount just wiping the excess off onto some paper towel because I don't want very much paint on my brush just want a hint a little hint of it and I'm just rubbing that on all over just to give a bit of an undersea shimmer let's see I think I've got all the paint on the right hand side instead of my left seeing as I'm right handed but why make things easy <laughs> right and there you have just a very very subtle shimmer it's not it's not a pearlescent shine it's just a color shift um, change as it catch, catches the light so I think on that one that's gold and I think on this one I used um, a, a pink undertone or a red undertone on that one and it can have quite you know quite the quite a very subtle difference but it does make a difference so let's seal that off I'm very conscious of the time I really need to show you these other molds um, and maybe I'll move these out of the way I think I could probably spend hours and hours um, showing off how to use these molds because they are just so they're so detailed and they're, they're so wonderful to work with so let's get the seahorses and octopus and the, pa the painting techniques for these are pretty much all the same um, so I'll show 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 you how I put this in the mold uh, show you how I mold these again very very simple just get your clay in the mold and then around the octopus legs just pull and scrape and push get all that clay into those into those um, areas I'm rubbing and pushing all at the same time I want to make sure that's all in there and I start with the leg area first with this with this mold because I want to make sure that I've got enough clay in that area cosmetic sponge is really good for this because you can get all those little islands nice and clear and then go in with your fingers again push and pull the clay away from the edges scrape any excess off give your mold a wiggle and out pops your fun little octopus so again pop him to one side and then we'll show you the same with the seahorse go in with the blue again for this why not so for this one I start start at the head and then I work this is just how I find it comfortable to do this I work my way round to the thinnest point so I start I know I know the mouth is just as thin as the tail but because the tails curly I find it easier to work my way round to the tail add a bit more clay let's just push that in there really push the clay in you want to get all that detail pull the clay any excess clay away flatten that give the mold a, a wiggle 
Come on, out you pop. And there you have your little seahorse. Now, if you wanted to, you could have some uh, some seaweed tucked um, or artificial flowers or anything like that that you had, and you could have that wrapped round a piece of wire like that before you place that on your card. Uh, in fact, let's see the seaweed that we've already got. If we had, I'm making this up as I go along, so I've not tried this yet. Um, you could wrap the tail around that piece and have that joined to, onto there like that. And it looks like it's wrapped around the seaweed. Because you can still manipulate the tail when you take it out of the mold, it gives you all those different design elements. And I've just noticed, actually, I mentioned that the, the fish uh, the fish tail was used for some of um, some of those corner elements. But look at the lovely shape on that seahorse fin that can be used in multiple ways um, and add just little corner embellishments to your projects as well i think that's that's a really clever idea and going back to the the, the turtle um our design team cut one of those fins off like that and that became the jellyfish head with the with the tentacles running down and you could in fact do that with the sea the seaweed so let's me find a piece of white card there we go so you can see this so automatically you've not seaweed um, you've got a jellyfish with the seaweed and the the fin from from the turtle so, so you can really really make an entire underseen theme with um with these molds so let's move you out of the way I move you out the way. There we go. Uh, go there. We go in there. I'm busy putting things back in the box, otherwise I lose them. Um, and we still, we still, I still have the the mermaid I want to show you. Um, but before we get to her. Let me go back to these fish very quickly. Fish and crabs. We've still got a few more minutes, so let's see. Move you out of the way. Let's bring these back in. I'm guessing a baby wipe or a damp, a damp, a damp towel will work for this. I'm just going to cut this up because I'm not going to need. Don't want to waste a whole whole baby wipe when you only need a small piece right so on the fish for instance let's start with with this one I'm just going to pull back some of that paint and dip my hand into iridescent paint at the same time because I forgot it was on the paper towel which is what I always do <laughs> And again with the turtle here you don't need to do much just wipe some of that back and you've got that color shining through i've got orange on there so i'm going to get another clean piece and i like the effect of just gently lifting some color back away from what was there originally and i'm going to do that again i'm going to do this with the crabs as well so it's that one there just give him a little buff so he gets a bit of a blush but he doesn't get um yeah the your pieces aren't too dark you've got the indication of color there and the light coming through from from the color underneath so it just it, it lifts your pieces and makes them not too um helps keep them nice and bright and colorful not too dark so we're going to go back in with this one as well just pull some of that color back let's move those to one side and 
I then sometimes like to go back in with a little bit of watercolour, not much, but say for instance on that turtle there, um, if I wanted to then just take a little bit of yellow or an, another colour, I always go for a lighter colour, you can then add some colour back into that area. And the orange is still there, but you've got, but your piece starts to glow a little bit because you've got a two tone, two tone color there. So I always start with the darkest one, pull some back, and then add a lighter color on the top. And then go in for the, for the eyes again. It's just black and white paint, nothing fancy. tiniest amount little circle there pupils getting bigger and bigger on this one leave that to dry and then with anything like this where you've got um, a color background just paint Paint some white onto there first. I'm doing this very quickly because I know that we're running out of time here and I still want to show you the gorgeous mermaid and show you some more finished pieces. Okay, so pretend I've done that neatly because I'm doing this quickly. I'll just do the one because we were running out of time here. Then go back in with my black paint. Paint in the pupil. There we go. And then white paint again. So with a toothpick or a fine, fine paintbrush. I think white paint's getting quite thick now, actually. It's starting to dry out. Just go back in, just put a little dot there for a highlight and let's do the same with, with him. Little dot there for the highlight. And he's come to life. So I'm going to shift these to one side and show you the mermaid. Because the mermaid I mean I I love all of these molds, but the mermaid I think is such a clever and versatile mold. Um, and I do want to um, give her some time so here we go so the mermaid mold itself is quite a deep mold um, and you can have it flat back or or three-dimensional so on this piece here this is so we've we've got pretty much all the elements um in the mold or in the collection on here bar the um are the seahorse and the dolphins um, and the mermaid we've kept the back flat for the mermaid there so you can still stick that to flat projects um, if you don't want to stick a, a family photo in there this is a really really old family photo of mine um, <laughs> I don't think my sister's going to forgive me because that's when we were we were really tiny um, right let's pop that in there and if you don't want to have a family photo in the frame, this, these are our MDF single aperture frames that are available on, on the website. Um, again, um, you can get everything at ktzoodesigns.com. Um, I've just made this a little bit deeper. So I've added a couple of bits of foam board underneath there just to make that a bit deeper. Um, and if you wanted to, you could then screw in some key hooks and turn this into um, a family um, key holder if you wanted to do that. So you could put the photo in there or you could stick your dolphins or a range of shells or whatever you wanted into there. But again, flat back mermaid or you could go three dimensional with your mermaid and have it draped onto anything or on top of anything. Uh, so for instance, this gorgeous treasure box here, she's sleeping on top of the treasure box. 
and okay this has just had a very rough paint paint job but you could also turn your mermaid into a sleeping fairy so this has been made using some of the flower pro leaf leaf molds and some of the, the flower pro petals i think this is a tulip tulip petals for the wings and the um the sunflower sunflower leaf i've cut off part of the tail because i wanted to give the indication of her body there and there you have a lovely sleeping fairy so it doesn't just have to be a mermaid let me move that out the way and show you very quickly how this mold works and how to simply give her just a little bit of life without getting too caught up in the detail so i find it's easier for me if i start with some flesh colored clay so this will be um just trying to think of uh, i put the uh, mixing chart up on the katie sue blog um ian if you can find it that will be great if you could put the mixing mixing chart up um, if not, I'll find the link later and, and add it to the comments. I start with a flesh coloured clay for, for the head area. I'm using a credit card or the Katie Sue Flexi Scraper, Flower Pro, uh, Flower Pro Flexi Scraper, to get the clay into the head part of this mould. So I'm creating a wall over here for the base. Because this is a lovely deep mould, you need that opening to be able to get the, the clay out of the mould and still get that lovely, lovely detail. By using a flesh colour uh, flesh colour clay, um, it can be any, any flesh tone that you like, it saves on you painting the face later and then all you need to do is go in, add a little bit of blush with actual blusher or pa um, chalk pastels. Um, and um, paint the hair so pull that out just like that it really is that simple place that to one side i'm going to use the same color for the back of the hair just so that the whole piece holds together nicely and um, blends nicely so when you paint it you don't have two different colors there push that all the way in Flat in the back, give that a flex, and there you have, there you have her hair. Now that could be a rock as well. Uh, it doesn't have to, doesn't have to be hair. Then I add some craft glue. This is PVA glue. You want it to be water based. The clay, your clay is wet, so anything that's not water based may peel away um, because your clay is still drying. Place the hair piece on the back and join those edges this is this is where your card comes in handy because you can pl place her on top of the, the card and go in with i'm going to use a toothpick this time just so if you don't have fancy tools you can use a toothpick blend those two edges together create extra waves and curls in the hair just to join those two edges together. But I have made sure that my glue was all the way to the edges there because that will help to keep those edges together. And as it dries, it'll stop them from, from separating. There we go. So I'm gonna place her to one side while I make the mermaid tail. And you can see here there's a bit of a ridge on the inside there. That's where the tail's going to fit. So pop her to one side. Let's, uh, I'm going to do a green tail this time just because it was close to hand. And we'll have just enough time for me to show you the mermaid, show you a finished mermaid, and 
we might overrun by two minutes or so i will show you how to paint the eyes quickly on these push all that clay into the mold pull it off give the mold a wiggle pop that out and then add a little bit of PVA craft glue on to the tail and press that gently into the mermaid's body now this is where if you're wanting to to dry it in a particular way if you're wanting her to be sitting on top of something flat you could leave her like that or if you wanted her draped over the edge of something this, this is the moment where you can curl the tail round or like this one if you wanted it on the ball or on this globe you press her on top of the, the globe and gently maneuver her into the position that you want so gently stretch gently twist until you have the position you want without pressing too much and distorting the detail likewise with the tail you could also change her position so she might you might want her sleeping or frolicking in the in the sun and she's got her tail up so you could you could twist the tail up like that as well so you do what you want with this also if you don't want her to be a mermaid and you want to use the tail for something else there you have a different type of seaweed or again cover her with a leaf cover her with a leaf and she becomes a sleeping fairy so you can turn this into whatever you want her to be so let's move these out of the way and very briefly let me show you a couple of finished partially finished pieces so you could really go detailed with the eyes like this piece here really really going to fine detail or you can just keep the eyes closed with a just a thin line of paint and a thin line of paint on the lips there not very much or to keep things really simple if you don't want her sleeping you want her to be awake you're not that great at painting let me grab one here okay so i'm going to grab my white paint which is hiding from me right here and we've just hit one o'clock but i'll have a quick chance to show you these eyes and then we will have to resume another day possibly we'll certainly have a look at all the lovely samples um, that our design team's made i'll end off with um with a little video preview of some of the things that our design team have made I promise you i could probably continue going for another two hours showing you all the things that could be done with this mold but i know the office would never forgive me <laughs> so i'm using a little dotting tool here and a little bit of black paint and i'm just pressing one little dot of black paint onto each eye really really simple then going in with a toothpick and some white paint and one more little dot there with the white paint one dot over there with the white paint there we go and she's got a little highlight in her eye of course the paints black paint is still wet so the white is not sticking typical come on let's go there you go and there you have a sweet little face for your mermaid with really simple eyes you don't have to um be great at painting just one black dot one white dot and you're good to go i'd love to spend a lot more time with you showing you more tips and tricks um, and things that you can do but an hour disappears very very quickly <laughs> um when you're crafting so 
I'm going to switch over to our VT now, um, show you some examples of what our design team have made. Thank you for spending time with me today. Um, do hop on over to KTC Designs uh, website, buy your sample, or buy your materials there, and get your clay while you're at it as well. Um, you will need uh, need your clay to make these, obviously. Um, and have fun and share what you make um, on our social media pages. We'd love to see what you create with our products. Right, see you all soon. Happy crafting. <laughs>